I, I told you, I was looking over it, and at one point we were in that second Final Fantasy school, and the guy was like, as we clicked on the guy who was saying, and the thing about limit breaks is you got to go into the menu to switch them around. Uh -huh. We're going like, oh, this is another Final Fantasy school. Oh, you don't just do this. Listen. Just watch straight out. <laughs> Welcome to No One Can Know About This, a podcast where we play every Final Fantasy. I'm Jeff Ekman. And I'm Ryan Kazmiski. And here we go, Season 4, Episode 40. This one's going to be brutal. Yeah, we are going to go grind in the Gelnica. <laughs> That's the plan. First, and... it, it, let me just say, it's a week later. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've, we've stepped away from the game after spending a full seven days immersing ourselves in it. We've mm -hmm. taken seven days away from it. We're going to go out for breakfast. I can't remember where we went. It'll become apparent. Mm -hmm. But yeah, then we're going to go grind in the Gelnica to get ready for the battle square. Yeah, and I mean, we are, we're not even really leveled for the Gelnica. Like, we are so <laughs> underleveled and we're so in denial about it. Like, we don't even want to think about, like, mm -hmm. how much it's going to really take. That's exactly the case. We thought this would be our final day playing. Mm -hmm. We went into this going, like, we'll play all day, but then at the end of it, we'll be done. I don't know <laughs> why we thought that or how we could have. Well, here's a marker of how sure we were that this was going to be the end, is that I'm looking at the breakfast recording, and it is labeled final day breakfast, mm -hmm. which it definitely is not. There's m multiple more days. Our characters are what in the 60s? I think level wise, <laughs> Barrett's 59. Bar yeah, they are <laughs> barely in the 60s. Yeah, we're like going like we just have the two optional super bosses. Not going like why would they make optional super bosses if it didn't require you to basically max your shit out? Because I thought that they would be somewhere in the middle. <laughs> I, I mean, know. it's just we're like weird. Uh, we're I just think we're so stupid for this. But anyway, yeah, <laughs> I think the last thing to do before the final bosses is the battle square. Yeah, there's like, I think there's a cutscene we haven't seen that we save. Yeah, we save we that like for the save it. We're gonna the... like find out about that and then yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the battle square and then the, the weapons is all that's left. Yeah, so I guess without any further ado, let's get into it. Mm -hmm. It's a week later, here we go. Yeah, I woke up excited today being like, we're just gonna hang out and play Final Fantasy VII, it's gonna be good. Yep. So glad that uh, that guy on the Discord that's secret scene. Yeah, I just saw that. Oh yeah, I think that was when we learned about this final scene that we need to make sure that we see before the end of the game. Thank yeah. you very much to Matunica, mm -hmm. Bill from the RPG Golden Years podcast for yeah. giving us that information. That gave me this like glimmer of hope of like, yeah. we'll do all this awful shit, but then there'll be like this reward <laughs> at the end, this cutscene, the secret cutscene we can watch. Just uh, like go around, there's parking behind. We're gonna take a meter, but well, it's easier to do this, I think. Uh, can I have a bit of beef and a uh, brioche with butter and jam? Uh, uh, for here. This to me is like a French donut or something. Yeah. The brioche. Yeah, I did. Uh, last night when I got home from work, I just fished until I went to bed. Uh -huh. You can only fit one big fish on your horse. It's a real problem. Oh, did you get a legendary fish? No, but there's musky in the lakes that are just, they're just real they're big. They're just real big. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, Red Dead is out. Oh man, and yeah, I played so much of that game without playing the game at all. Just <laughs> right. going out in the woods, <laughs> pretending I'm homeless in the it, Old West. <laughs> I believe Red Dead Redemption 2 had come out the day before we left the cabin, and we were like, let's get out of that Final Fantasy world and, and into, into the Old one. West. <laughs> Really fit one? Yeah, I just kept catching them over and over again. I had this pile of fish, and I was like, I guess they're just gonna stay here. <laughs> I got some worms, and I went to where I know there's a legendary fish and just couldn't find them, and then I wound up hunting. But yeah. yeah, I gotta figure out how many horses you can get to follow you at one time, because I think that's the solution to you can get a lot. Of what? I think you can get a lot. Because you can get at least, yeah. I usually ride around with two, just like for cargo, but I wonder if you can just like... That's a good idea. Yeah. I never thought of that. Yeah. If I'm going out on a hunting trip, I'll go take out another horse that's bothered I was just me. listening to Dan Carlin talk about how the Mongols used to have like four remounts per guy. <laughs> it was like, yeah. imagine this army with like eight horses per person, and they like... 
would they were like the horses would come when you would whistle, which like I guess is not the case outside of video games. Usually, I, th I think you need to have like a very well trained horse. Yeah, right? they were like that, they, the horses would just follow them. Yeah, the horses in Red Dead are very obedient. <laughs> like you ride it for five minutes, and it's like I'll follow you anywhere. <laughs> I just shot somebody off of your back, and now you're mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel great after that quiche. That was the perfect thing. Exactly. It was it's like the correct amount of breakfast. It's the, it's the proper, like, <clears throat> actually what you should eat in the morning. So we go back home, and we begin the real descent. All full of grind fuel. This is going to turn into a season one situation very quickly. Wait, where we left off, we got... Our party equipped with all of the materia that we want to level, and we're in the Gelnica, and we're just going to walk around and level for the Bro, beginning yeah. of this day. Mm -hmm. That's how this day begins. <laughs> then we're going to fight the two weapons by that vacation home, and we just learned about a cutscene. Yeah, we got to go see that cutscene. That's in Nibelheim. Mm -hmm. Thanks to Matunica. Was it Bill? I think it was, right? It was Matunica. Bill. Oh. This is Bill uh, from RPG Golden Years. Yeah, I just know on the Discord it says Bill RPG Golden Years. Yeah, he's he's Matunica. <laughs> Let us know about this cutscene that we almost missed just in time. It's I'm so glad too because I I don't know why I felt like this, but I was like I feel like there's got to be another cutscene or something out there. I mean I have no idea what it's about, but what if it is about like Zach? I, that's what I hope. I have a feeling it might be about Vincent. Because that's where we found him, that's where all of his stuff is, and his thing has been pretty slight, but I don't know. We know this cutscene is back in the basement at Shinra Mansion mm -hmm. in Nibelheim, so we will be going back to the Nightmare Mansion one last time at the end of the game. <laughs> but right now, we just gotta get ready for that fucking battle square, so it's grind time in the Gelnica for a really long time. Here, we gotta get everybody's limit breaks fully unlocked. We gotta get their limit breaks, we at least gotta get... I think Barrett still needs his ultimate weapon, and so does Cloud. Okay. There's a- we got a full fucking day. There's a lot to do. It's like, not There's a, a long list, but it's stuff that'll take a while. And then, the final dungeon. Mm hmm Which I think will be cake by the time we- Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Man, I love these environments. It feels great to be back here. Right? Yeah. It's weird to hear us saying that because of how much I hate the Galnica now. Yeah, I agree. The scale of this, too. Like, think of how big this plane is. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like an aircraft carrier. Yeah. Well, it's not an aircraft carrier, it's an aircraft... Well, it's like an airplane that's the size of one. Right. Well, it's... <laughs> oh, no. It's like a cargo plane. Mm -hmm. With enough room for many tanks. Yeah. Bigger than the Enola Gay, the Garonica is... It's 200 feet long and carry up to four fat men and three little boys. It can also hold up to 8,000 monsters. Maybe the monsters it can hold are infinite. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> I can't believe this place is still airtight and hasn't, like, been fully flooded yet. I know. Amazing pressurization on this, uh, this hole. Because this wasn't made to go under the water in the first place. No! Fucking goddammit! Oops. I hit left. Well? Ryan just tried to revive the enemy. Okay, you have to be so fucking careful. Holy shit, this guy's serious. Yeah. So you said you wanted to get everybody to level 70? Yeah, I do. Just to reiterate, everyone's still at 60, and that's not even what we should be focusing on. Well, for the battle arena, it is. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> we'll quickly get fully leveled for this area, and then we'll have a shot at the underwater weapon. Because the fact that, like, we're getting one-shotted by stuff in here... Yeah, we. I mean, the underwater weapon, we were getting one-shotted in a way that was, like, double our health. Kind of amazing how much more hardcore underwater weapon is than flying around weapon was. Yeah, but I think desert weapon is going to be the, the hardest. The I fucking... ever great. Yeah. High potions are worthless. Yes, we birthed an HP plus. Awesome. Well, we already have three, I think. Yeah, but that means we leveled one up all the way, too. Oh, okay, yeah. Someone's sad. I know. I don't care. What does sadness even do? I don't know. This game has some status effects that I 
don't even know if they bring back that are like double-edged swords. You know, like I, sadness, I think, makes you harder to hit, but also makes your damage, I don't know, it's like some... <laughs> we'll look it up right now while we're just leveling. Well, because Fury is like Berserk, right? No. No? No, it does something. It's They're like soft status effects. It's like, you know, not as detrimental as Confuse or something, but it changes, you know, I don't know. Causes the character to take 30% less damage. This is sadness. Uh huh. 30% less damage from physical and magical attacks, but also halves the rate that the limit gauge fills. Sadness is the opposite of Fury. So Fury must make you take more damage, but your limit gauge fills faster, which is like yeah. those two things are connected anyway, so that makes sense. Yeah. I think it's a real look inside of our psyche that both of us have been looking at the status effects, sadness and fury for literally the whole game. Yeah, they show up a lot. And we never once bothered to look it up because it just didn't seem like we it had was worth to, it. you know, but it would have been worth it. I like that today is going to kind of function like a mini version of what Final Fantasy really is, which is... You go out, you get strong, mm -hmm. you get everything all leveled up, and then you go out, you kill some things, and then you kill the boss. This is, re yeah, this is really the, the stripped down, this is what Final Fantasy 1 was. <laughs> right, exactly. You may want to make Sid furious so that he takes more damage and gets more limit break. Yeah, I don't know how to do that, though. It just has to, like, happen to him. But I just know that sometimes we get out of battle and we're sad and furious, right. and I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes the battle ends and we're just really mad about it or sad about it. We'll learn this later, but you can use hyper, I mm -hmm. think, yeah, is the item that will cure cures... sadness and then make you furious if you give it to you. Yeah, and the tranquilizer does the opposite. Right. The furious ring makes you always furious. Anytime you put this fucking ring on your finger, you're angry as shit. It's a mood ring, but it, it only has one mood. And it what causes you to clouds sadness. Walking around in the underwater plane. Mm -hmm. Way more effective in the woods. The woods is just for kids these days. Yeah. Where yuffians are found. <laughs> what? Holy shit. Calling it an airstrike. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's Barrett's level three limit break satellite beam. Yeah, it's our first time trying it out. A beam from the sky came down through the water and through the plane, didn't cause a hole in the plane, and water to rush in. Did hurt him. That's why I want to see a movie where the action scenes work like this. An unrealistic smorgasbord of total destruction. Man, I was playing the other day and I came upon just like piles of whitetail bucks in the woods. Like some really? hunter had stashed oh, a bunch really? of them. Oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> like four of them. God, the world is so alive in that world. We're still in our low 60s. I don't think that that experience angles in our future. No. It's never gonna hatch. No, I was prepared today for this to be very slow going for the most part. Of like, yeah, we just gotta do it. Bum, bum, ba -da 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 -da. So you're gonna have to go pick up more ethers to keep leveling. Yeah, I'll use it my tents first or whatever. Yeah. Gotta get on the submarine, gotta drive back to the plane, gotta take the plane to Cosmo Canyon. Gotta get the ethers, yeah. gotta go back to the submarine. There's like a, a lot of steps involved. <laughs> oh god, now I'm getting text messages that are scams. I got one two days ago. It was nuts. But this is hi hi Kelvin. <laughs> this is M Relief. You may be eligible for $150 a month to spend on groceries with Cal Fresh. Want to answer a few questions and see if you qualify? Uh, green apple emoji. Yeah, I got one yesterday. That it was so or not yet. Whatever. It was so devious. It was like, hey. For our earlier conversation, is this the best number to reach you at? Oh, what a bunch like, of assholes. And I was like, who is this? And it replied like instantly with like, oh, this is the people you called earlier about clearing up your tax debt. Oh, and of I was course. Like, fuck yeah, you guys. What a like, bunch of dicks. <laughs> yeah, part of me wants to respond to this, go fuck yourself. You know, it's probably right? not even a person. I know. That's the problem is like, 
doing that, like, who are you, why are you doing this, go fuck you know, yourself thing. I know, I know tarring and feathering is cruel and unusual, but people who <laughs> do this kind of shit deserve it, and they deserve to be walked through the streets, because they fucking are hiding. Like, they get to hide and be safe and annoy everybody on a scale that is unfathomable. It's like a small annoyance, but on a, a global scale, you know? Like, it deserves some kind of, like... Yeah. Like, concentrate that all of that down into, like, one day of somebody's life and give that to them. Yeah. <laughs> Every fucking phone call and text message they ever sent illegally, concentrate all that into one day. What yeah. does that day look like? It, it looks like they're covered in tar, <laughs> and they have to pick the feathers off and rip their skin exactly, off in the process yeah. as they pull the tar off of their skin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. While everyone laughs at them. Yeah. You can really tell, like, the quality of an activity by what conversations stick. Like, we're talking about yeah. the annoyance of phone scammers for just forever. <laughs> yeah. Your emotions about the thing that you're talking about, like, are affected by what you're doing at the given time. Yeah, I think if we hadn't been grinding, we probably would have found something else to discuss. Like, oh, <laughs> Or at least let it roll off our backs. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. And then it'll take them, like a while to heal their skin, if ever. It'll be scarred forever, and that'll be what they've done to us. I mean, I'm not normally a cruel man, but here's what I would do to people who send phony text messages. <laughs> I'm just saying, Ryan Kazmiski 2020. <laughs> like, you're like, you're like, uh, uh, what I deem the equivalent of an eye for an eye. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's gonna be eye for an eye, but weird. But like, not an eye. <laughs> Not an eye. It's going to be like a metaphorical truth. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to punish you through allegory. Like, <laughs> it's really going to suck. It's going to fuck with your head in ways that <laughs> you'll never recover from. Yeah. Oh, we're going to whip you, but on your brain, inside of your yeah. mind. <laughs> Yeah, you will be able to I see really the scars like we give you. Phone scammers and con men are just the lowest of the... They are so it's low because so... it's like that, like... It, it's predatory in the, like, throwing spaghetti at the wall way. Yeah. It's like a whale eating krill or something. They're just right, like filtering yeah. through society, <laughs> grabbing the... God, I mean, in the fucking whales, it's just not fair at all to the krill. They don't even have a shot. They can't even see what's coming. And it's just indiscriminate. Yeah, they're fuck not the even, whales. They're not even thinking about which krill they want to eat. You know, they don't even care where it came from or, like, how well that krill lived. They don't care if it can afford to be eaten or not. Yeah, they kill just, the whales. They just... Don't save the <laughs> whales. Just the... Anyway, we're fighting one of the four enemies that's down here, mm -hmm. which looks like a big dragon thing with, with wings. Yeah, and... it's a sea monster. They've got wings, but they're underwater. You know, fins. Those are fins, but they're, but they're like at the end of it's like... like it, it's like it's evolved from a thing that used to fly, and now it's a fish. Now it's a fish. That does seem like, at one point, it's returned to the sea. It's like I saw an image of a mock-up of what people think like an ancestor of the whale might look like. Oh yeah? And it's basically a rodent, but sort of shaped like a whale. Like it's got legs and it's like comes like <laughs> like its snout comes kind of like to oh, a long yeah. point. But it's like a rat. <laughs> but it's like giant. a rat. Yeah, it wasn't even giant. It was just like a thing that uh -huh. was like kind uh -huh. of shaped like a whale. That's funny. It was yeah. I'm sure that they found some fossil or something. Yeah. It's a testament to how good this game is that I'm happy to play this today instead of playing Red Dead. Yeah. Even though no, it's an option. <laughs> you know, like. Well, we did spend the last five days making that choice for the most- God damn it! We start looking up other places we could grind, mm -hmm. and the only other option really is like near the bottom of the final dungeon. And we'll get, we're gonna talk about it in the recordings, but like we're not willing to go into the bottom of the final dungeon to then leave it to go do the final bosses. Like that's like, to me, that area might as well not exist. Right, because we want to be pure. Whatever that means. <laughs> Why did we want to be pure? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Something about be sure to have some elixirs when battling magic pots. If you attack them before you feed them an elixir, then they'll steal from you and flee from battle. And they could steal something important like an ultimate weapon. I don't want to do that. Fuck. <laughs> what? Because I was like, look, it only doesn't flush when there's poop in it. It's, That's it's what like I not that it doesn't flush, it's that it doesn't It doesn't suction. clear the bowl. Yeah, so but it, it clears the bowl when there's nothing in it. 
was what I realized. Mm. It was like, it'll flush through all the time as long as there's no mass in there. And I was like trying to explain to them, I was like, well, if you want, I can prove to you that it doesn't flush, but you gotta see my own poop in there. It's a week later and the new toilet is not in yet. Yeah, and you're still trying to figure out how to convince them. Looking back on this, I'm like, it would have been hilarious if you, like, cracked open a can of SpaghettiOs or something and, like, dumped them in the toilet That's to what, show I should have just needed a mask. Yeah, yeah, you just could have get something that can flush. I think SpaghettiOs would flush And okay, I think right? it's very much like poop, yeah. depending on your poop. Yeah, sometimes it's like that. Full of wriggling masses of what looks like pasta and blood. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's probably just a problem with the chain, like, needs to be tighter. Has he not killed enough people to even unlock the level 3? Yeah, I don't think so. Wow. Yeah, Sid hasn't unlocked his level 3 limits yet. Mm -mm. Let's take him to the end! Let's try to get final kills with Sid. So if there are satellites in space, Sid's launching all sorts of non-manned rockets all the time. Yeah, well, I figure they must, Shinra must have been doing something before trying to put people up there. Yeah, yeah, you don't start with people. But where are the other launch pads? I don't know. I feel like they could just point that big gun at the sky and put a satellite in it and just Boom. shoot it. <laughs> Jules Verne style. Yeah. I just think that there would be something in that crashed helicopter. Yeah. Oh, Cloud's HP went way up because not only did he level up, but his HP material level up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whoa! Whoa! Was that Cloud's meteor rain? I believe so. We're unlocking limit breaks. Yeah, there's at least something new happening during mm. this first grind, you know? Like, we're at least every now and then we get to see a new limit break. Whoa! Yeah, we gotta get these old school limit breaks. They're yeah, because look at so how powerful good. that yeah, was. I can't that believe was like, we fucking allowed Was that like five or six? Of like, I don't even know, just like so much they wouldn't even let you see. I really feel like people are gonna be so mad at us. We would have had all of them by now. Oh, without a doubt. We just haven't killed 80 guys with Cloud yet. Oh, God. Oh, man, just survived this. Oh, this is bad. Oh, yeah, I forgot that there was a certain enemy that could sometimes, if he confused Cloud, Cloud would just take out the rest of the party, and it could yeah. be disastrous We're getting for a us. little too comfortable here in the Gelnica. <laughs> oh, God. Don't hit me. Should I attack or Oh, revive? you're dead. Should I revive? No, heal. Heal yourself. Ex potion, elixir, something. Damn it! How fucking long <laughs> since we last? A very long time. <sighs> yeah, that's a lot of time wasted, isn't it? Well, look on the bright side. We'll be able to unlock those same limit breaks again. Yeah, that'll be fun. This is really, like, where I think our spirit <laughs> begins to break. I know you want to flagellate yourself, so this is all your fault. I blame you. Yeah. It's all wasted time. <laughs> God damn it. It doesn't matter, really. <laughs> it was, like, a, close to an hour of just wasted time just now, right? Yeah. <sighs> what a stupid thing. I, he... It was bound to happen. <laughs> He confused the wrong guy at the wrong time and killed one of the people who was still alive, and then... I don't know. I don't know if there's anything you could do. It's like he used the tactics that were designed to beat us that were programmed into him, and then they worked, and I mean, I don't even know what happened back there. <laughs> oh. Recovery started too late. Oh. The seriousness of the situation. Oh... That just really stinks. Like, that's something so much shittier about losing that time than, like, having to replay a story mission. Oh. I kind of disagree. <laughs> I'd uh, rather just do this mindlessly than watch a cutscene again. I guess. It's just like, at least the first time it was in, it was more engaging, you know? I the mean... The is all different. This kind of lost time kind of just fades into the Ether for look me. At, look at Sid's HP. The materia is a little different. This is before we made that change. Yeah. Well, we were. I was shifting materia kind of throughout. I should have been. Should have been saving. Man, yeah, this, this is, is way back. This we is... had over three hundred thousand gold. <laughs> like way over. Mm -hmm. And now we're back to one hundred thousand. Yeah. <sighs> Fuck. Shit. Whoa! I didn't realize that we had only a hundred thousand gold now. We had 88 when we started. We just got up to 100,000. 
We had a 300 and like 60,000. Yeah. That is insane how far we made it. So I'm sorry, man. <laughs> it's okay. I, I know, but it it's sucks, just like, but... I'm just like, oh my god, it's so... I felt like we were just cruising and that things were going great. And now I'm like, oh, let's save regularly after a handful of fights. It's so much easier to remember to save often when you're like doing a variety of things. I know. But when you're just yeah. doing one... Get lulled into a false sense of security. Yeah. Smaller chunks with more saves is, hurts nobody. It saves lives. It's a good thing I like the ambiance of this game so much. Yeah, it is. I mean, the thing is, like, I every time that we look at the Galnica, you're like, I hate this place. I'm I like, hate the ambiance of it. Getting anxiety about the fact that this is only our first Gelnica episode. Like, uh. I hate listening to the music. I hate looking at the end. Like, I, it's just like, it's making me upset. It really is crazy <laughs> to me how much you're liking it back then. I know. Well, this is our first real grind I, session in there, still. and I'm going like, you know, it sucks, but this is a cool location or whatever. I, I mean. We are now out of high potions. God, this guy has some attacks that are mostly harmless and some that are just so fucking devastating. I know, well this is the guy that game over. Fire was born. Yay. Yeah, this materia thing with materia birthing other materia <laughs> would cause, it would be such a problem. Like, there would just be fire materia falling out of everybody's pockets. Yeah, yeah, you were texting me this the other day that like, you could start a mysterious store with a little materia and a dream. You just walk around killing a bunch of rats. Yeah, and you just wait till you have like a dozen <laughs> yeah. of that materia and you sell it's, the extras for another totally materia. Right you know, about like, that, yeah. You really could drag yourself up by the bootstraps in this world. Yeah, since, uh, with a materia and a dream. Since materia seems to break the laws of physics and just <laughs> <Exactly>. self-replicate. <laughs> Maybe every time the materia levels up, it's actually just sucking the souls out of the people that you're killing in the battle. That's a good point. Like, maybe the life stream force inside of them gets absorbed into the materia, mm -hmm. and then it gets pregnant, and then you get two materias. <laughs> yeah, so it's... It gets pregnant with dead souls. <laughs> <laughs> if you could just, like, get money by killing ants, yeah, you can't. Do a very that. small amount, but you could do it, it if you like killed enough ants. Like, be a beaver trapper, you know. You can get money killing ants. Oh, like an, ex an exterminator. I, yeah, I don't know how this didn't occur to us. Yeah, it's a whole profession. There's a whole job surrounding <laughs> it. Sell yeah, that, well, you would. Yeah, you would skin them and sell them for their pelts. But like, I don't know. You could also make a living as like a rat catcher, maybe? Can you still a, do a that? A rat catcher? Yeah. Not an exterminator, but like they, <laughs> no, they're going around and no, picking so up you, individual you catch, rats you catch and the then rats. bringing them to like the rat pound. Yeah, yeah, you take them to the rat pound. <laughs> the world's worst <laughs> place. The world's worst place. It's just like millions Covered. of individual cages and they're all like... It's People just are like bringing them in one by one. Endless rats. Being euthanized one at a time as they're not oh. adopted. No, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> what do we want to level up here? Typhoon? Typhoon could be good. I don't know what it is. Uh, I think it's a... It's a summon. It's a yeah, summon. Yeah. I think it's a high level summon. Yeah, let's level that up. Plus we haven't seen it either, so... We're still so far away from where we were. When I came over. Right now. What are these? They're like octopuses that are in a bag. Kind of like some kind of mollusk, maybe. Oh yeah, that's probably a shell. Yeah, but it's also got little feet. Yeah, it's some kind of gross thing. Probably all got mixed up with a bunch of Mako and shit too. And yeah, so yeah. Or like, I mean, I, I don't know what they're doing with their plastic bags and garbage in this world, but I imagine they're just tossing them right in the, right in the ocean. Oh yeah. So maybe they I wonder are... how much plastic waste they have in this world. Yeah, that's like, you know, do they cut up their six pack plastics or are there a bunch of monsters that are like stuck in plastic and can't really breathe. So just for a change of pace, we run around in the other room in the Gelnica, which yeah. is like the research room. I think so. And you know what? There's like an item in here that we still haven't gotten <laughs> and we don't get for like a long ass time. Yep. And watching this is just making my fingers. I'm just kind of like scratching the table going like it's right there in the corner. Just go get it. <laughs> Planes engines don't like this isn't a starship. But I bet it's like run on a Mako reactor. Oh, of it's course like it is. Of yeah, nuclear it's, airplane, you know. Yeah, that's still a nuclear-powered airplane that has propellers. It's powering like a regular combustion motor. Yeah. 
Turn around, Barrett, he's behind you. Well, don't nuclear submarines have propellers? Yeah, but not like traditional... Yeah, no, you're right. You're totally right. Those are basically propellers. Yeah. Like, you could run a propeller on any kind of energy, but you just right. wouldn't anymore in a plane. Right. Yeah, there aren't really nuclear-powered airplanes, huh? No. You don't want that. You don't want that. You don't... You don't... But we put nuclear-powered spaceships, which have come and, like, rained down over... Really? Canada. Yeah, well, this Russian one like came down and it was like complicated because like pieces of radioactive material were like showing up across parts of the United States and Canada. I think it was in the 70s. Future Jeff will uh, jump on that opportunity to talk about the Russian space program. <laughs> I'm not going to take the time to look that one up. I'm going to trust past me to have gotten that right. <laughs> There's going to be plenty of opportunities for that this season. Yeah, there really, really are. Well, Sid's thing, man, his thing about science being a superpower that human beings created and, like, we don't need all this fucking magic and materia shit because, like, we're amazing because we can go into space is just, like, my life philosophy in a nutshell and, like, what I think is so cool about being humans on the planet Earth. Mm -hmm. The big rooms have the bigger enemies. That makes sense, I guess. <laughs> well, that little room is such a little room. Yeah. It's, like, amazing that you can find more enemies in it because you'd be like, this little room is cleared out. Yeah, we had gone to some other rooms just for a variety of enemies, mm -hmm. but they don't pay out as good as the enemies in the big room. In so the big cargo room. That's short-lived. Like coming in through the cracks in the walls that aren't there because it's still airtight. It must just be loaded with fucking animals, like you're just pushing them out of the way. I do love that point that you've made before of like, <laughs> what, what would this space look like if you could actually see all the monsters that are hanging out in it? Yeah. It can now be public knowledge, by the way, that Dan is having a kid. Oh. And if we leave that in, by the time anyone hears this, he'll already have one. He might. <laughs> it might be born by then. <laughs> I think I had just found out that my brother was going to have a baby. Yeah. Which we've also tracked through this season. The baby is now like four months old. Yeah, at this point, belated congratulations to Dan and Maggie. The baby will be many, many more months old at the time that you hear this. I think like eight or nine months old. Yeah, so you can like think about a baby in multiple phases at one time. Yeah, she's so adorable. I might have a niece. Yeah, I mean, I'm also like waiting to see how Fallout 76 turns out. It seems like the beta is going pretty terribly. Oh, really? Um, like, yeah, everyone. In terms of the game itself, or yeah, in terms everyone of... is well. First of all, it's broken as shit. I mean, you right. can imagine that it's Bethesda I've, game, yeah. and it's the first it's multiplayer online. game. Yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> the video game world at the time we were recording this. Like, I mean, oh holy my shit, god, Fallout seventy six. When did Fallout seventy six come out? November 14th. So I think it was like going to be a week or two and yeah, you would like I was heard, waiting on it. heard I, that it was going to be a, well, a busted and mess. And I was assuming it was going to be, but I still like the game, like the idea of the game. I was like, I could probably still get into that yeah. because like I played Fallout 4, even though I didn't really like it because I can just get into like going through junk drawers and collecting keys and shit. You know, <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Because you then had such a, a long, a tortured, long tortured experience, experience with with trying that to game. like it. Yeah. yeah. Because if you don't know, it's it's like got to be the worst fucking game I've ever played in my entire <laughs> life. Like, I can't even imagine a game worse than this. The shit that you would tell me about it would was honestly mind-blowing. I mean, I can remember starting out, they, for whatever reason, decided there should be no NPCs in the world. So, like, the first I mission... So you like leave this vault and you and a bunch of random people are running to this one campsite where uh -huh. then all of you sit still because it's multiplayer. So there's other people around. You're not talking to any of them. Everyone just stands still and listens to a fucking audio log where like the person you're oh, supposedly God. following explains to you how to build a campsite. <laughs> Why the anyway? And this, Audio so that's logs, like, that's everybody's like, favorite thing in video that's games. That's like the exciting start to the new Fallout game, and yeah, from there it just it gets just worse. Like, it literally wouldn't work. It, it wouldn't like, work. Like there's all these events around the map. Something like about in Destiny. storage. I remember you telling me was oh like, oh my god, don't even get me started on that. It's a game where the only thing to do in it is to collect garbage to build things out of. You can you can get some garbage. Like you fill up your inventory within an hour. You know, yeah, as long as we're grinding and doing nothing, like, man, 
Fallout it was, it 76. was a crazy experience. It was like Red Dead came out and was amazing, and then yeah. I played like it was the like best totally game ever. Totally a complete yeah, video and then game. I played like the worst game ever. <laughs> so we'll see when that comes out if I'm really am gonna play it or not. But Red Dead right now is like more than enough for me to yeah. Red Dead, and, and I'll always have Destiny to go back to too. It's mm-hmm. really like man, we're almost back to three hundred thousand gil. Man, we lost May way more than I even realized. Yeah, that's what I, I like. I was like physically in pain because I realized like how much we had lost and I was like it's kind of crazy actually how much we had lost like there's something truer to how much that was lost time like this feels like the cost of doing business or something you know what I mean like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah I don't know some products got damaged so yeah it's like back, but... <laughs> yeah we lost that batch of iPhones but like there's we sell 70 million of them in a quarter. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think this is probably not possible, but I had a thought. Bugenhagen is not Professor Gas, right? There's no way that Gas... Gas dies in that... Right? I mean, like, Hojo comes to get the ancient heirs of Mom. I think and, so. Yeah. I'll have to... That's something that, like, I don't know this game at this point well enough to tell you that. I was just thinking, because there's like the throwaway comment about how Bugenhagen used to work for Shinra and that has like yeah. a Shinra part. Maybe um, he is. That would be amazing. That would be, the, it would kind of make sense in Let's a way. pay attention to that, or try to, when we're editing, because mm-hmm. I don't know this game inside and out yet. I mean, I think what it is is that Bugenhagen has a history with the Turks or something that is unclear. Yeah, well, he alludes to that he used to know Gas, like he was a scientist at Shinra. Right. I mean, it's not in there, but in the remake, I wouldn't hate it <laughs> if, like, Professor Gas, like, survives the shooting and right. then, like, changes his name and shaves his head and, and goes to the canyon Bugenhagen. and becomes Bugenhagen. <laughs> Like, he lost Eris's mom to Hojo and then quit Shinra and, like, dedicated his life to, like, being Cosmo spiritual Canyon or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, Somehow he flo- lost his legs and became a floaty guy. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe there's, like, a hidden video in some lab that's like, I figured out the way to float my legs. Ho, ho, ho. It's better than a wheelchair. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know, but maybe he was like, I'm also doing a new Santa thing. I've changed my name to Bugenhagen. Most people around here chose names like River or Sunshine. (laughs) Like, I chose Bugenhagen. (laughs) I don't think he is. I don't either. It was a thought I had in the shower the other day where I was like, huh. That would have been a cool idea if Bugenhagen had some history or there was like some connection like that, but... Cloud is a fucking beast. Feeling the leveling. At this point, we know there's no like secret optional super bus in here. Yeah. No, I don't think they hit any of those like they did in the first game or whatever, where it's like. Although I'm sure they're like really rare. Really hard. We're up above 400,000 gil. Yeah, I think we're back past where we were at least. Mm-hmm. We do for a save. Yeah. I mean, how many times can, be, can you be creepy touched? I mean, it's pretty gross. Well, I figure we'll hit a wall down here and then go get more items, go do something else for a while, maybe go revel at the pit. I guess there's a marsh down there. I don't even know what... He was saying that and I was like, what is the a, marsh? A marsh that's like in the northern caves. Whoa! Yeah. What is this move called? His new... whatever. Dragon dive, I guess? Wow! Not bad. That's a Sid limit break, where he just, like, jumps up he, and down <laughs> up well, on a guy with the spear. Well, he, like, jumps up and dives on him, and then he, like, jumps up and back like a foot, and then down and he, he falls. <laughs> forward again and di- he just keeps diving again and again and again. The higher level limit breaks are so much better than the lower level Oh my god, yes. So it's 300,000 to buy the vacation home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've been at this leveling for three and a half hours today. One of those hours was a waste of time. Mm-hmm. But we're gonna get two vacation homes in Costa del Sol. Mm-hmm. Break down one of the walls. Let's buy the whole town. We're gonna make their item store guy a very rich man. 
Oh. Really make you earn those levels. I know it's really slowed down. I think this is one of the best spots of the level. Man. Yeah, I'm not really liking what that means. <coughs> oh, bit by bit, climbing the ladder. Yeah, maybe we should go find those magic pots. I'm still traumatized from the ones in 12. I fucking hate those <laughs> yeah, things. Yeah, those things are the worst. I mean, how are we gonna feed them elixirs though? We can't feed them elixirs for experience points. It's not. Viable? We can't do that. We no, only we have like can't. one. Yeah, like yeah. we have three, but that's yeah. That doesn't seem like a move. We need to go farm elixirs somehow so that we can farm the magic pots. You gotta. Every single possible shortcut seems like it involves an amount of work to do the shortcut that it wouldn't shorten <laughs> that's anything. Exactly like, that's the like, situation, including ones that come later. Yeah. Do the work to get to the work so that you can do the other work. I know it's very realistic in that way. The other work <laughs> be even more effective. It's like you're taking steroids and then you're gonna go. But in order to do steroids, you have to like fucking do a bunch of shit. Mm -hmm. We should start thinking about lunch soon. I agree. I was thinking about pizza. I'm not eating pizza. That's I have not ordered like pizza in a long time. Tentacle. Fuck you. I'm sure we'll be up late. <laughs> yeah, this is seeming. <laughs> I mean, hopefully we'll be able to walk into these weapon fights and do it. Should I get the 18 wheeler or just a mushroom? I would go over just mushroom, actually. That okay. sounds more appealing to me right now. So it's cool. You want any orange sun kiss? No, I'm on it. Feeling the levels slowly but surely. It's getting easier. Oh my god, so slowly. It's really slow. Dude, getting to level 99 in the Sector 1 reactor area? Well, it took him like years, right? Or something? It's some insane amount of time. But yeah, I think he said 500 hours. Longtime listeners of the show know that one of our favorite stories of Final Fantasy playing out there in the world is this guy, Circle Master, who spent 500 hours getting to level 99 before the Sector 1 reactor. And now we're getting some perspective on, like, just what that means. Yeah. <laughs> level, yeah, all the way. But he's there. right, why do anything? What I was talking about earlier is that you feel fulfillment from doing stuff for others. And I don't know that you're really doing that for anybody. Yeah, exactly. That I don't know what the... It's a motivation I don't really fully understand, though I don't think it's, you know, it's similar to what we're doing in some ways, but also way more nihilistic. Yes. I mean, people have literally said to us, you're doing a service. Mm -hmm. It's like a Guinness World Record or something, you know? It's like, I ate a hundred hot dogs or some shit. It's like, why? I don't know, I wanted to be the one to do it. You know? And that's a good I reason to. Thing. Humanity, doing everything. Gonna take over for a little bit? Uh, I kinda wanna, yeah, in a minute. I wanna, I'm, I'm, close to... I'm in the zone a little bit here. Alright. Yeah, it started getting frustrating when I would watch like a really long summon, like, Ramu or something, and then it would do like 600 damage. Yeah. I still watched all of that. Like the earth broke apart, and lightning came from the sky, yeah, and this like... rat is still alive. <laughs> <laughs> the gods are not what they used to be on disc one. <laughs> and the rats are definitely stronger. Yeah. There it's getting close to 5,000 HP. And he was under 4,000 when he started. <laughs> It's all happening so slowly. Ungramax. What was that? Oh, that's limit. gonna be. Okay. Does, is that his final limit? It is. Oh, there we go. Oh, awesome. Catastrophe? Mm hmm. Although we haven't seen Ungramax yet. Yeah, let's do Ungramax <laughs> and then I'll equip it. Okay. Oh my god, it already has 60,000. It's got so far to go to X. Yeah, let guys. me see something. We were just checking out how far we needed to go to level up 2-cut to 4-cut, which, uh, we still had a long ways to go God, on. God, and there's just, man, the AP, they just drizzle it on you. It's just like, <laughs> it's like the drizzle on a toaster strudel, it's not enough. Here, do you want to take it for, for a bit? I gotta go to the bathroom. Sure. Oh. Cloud's MP is at 999. Yeah. Ungar Max. Holy shit. Whoa! That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I love how straightforward that one is. Yeah, it's just a <laughs> fucking machine gun. Barrett's level three limit break is just him opening up. He just shoots the machine gun, but he shoots it harder than usual. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> yeah, at least we get to see new moves regularly while doing this bullshit. 
Yeah, a small consolation. I gotta say, by the, by the next game, I think I'm gonna really lose patience with with these ultimate bosses. This is really ridiculous. Bear just leveled up his HP plus materia, and his nice. HP just went crazy. Let's see this catastrophe. This is our first level four level. He drills into the ground, jumps up. Whoa! <laughs> oh my god! It just keeps going. That's amazing. Oh wow! That's Barrett's level four catastrophe. His, his final limit break, mm -hmm. which is just like he jumps in the air and fires a cannon. It's just like a beam. He's like Some he's like Dragon beam. Ball Z's it. He jumps in the air and he goes, <laughs> and it just blasts the enemy. The limit breaks are how we're going to do the, the bosses. That's what's going to kill so. him. Yeah, getting Forget those, the getting those like, regularly. That plus up. Knights of the Round is going to be like... The fact that we can cast two Knights of the Round in a fight now is I was pretty thinking that. nuts. Yeah. <laughs> no, this weapon's starting to look a lot like, uh, like, things are falling into place for us to murder this thing pretty like, hard. Like, most of the summons, I feel like, are kind of wasted materia slots at this point. Right. But that one is, like, that one crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but it seems like the limit breaks are on that level. They are, I think. We're still little children at this point. I know. We're starting to get the idea. Knights of the Round is how you do it. Uh -huh. But casting it twice, that's that's child's play. And limit breaks, they're nice to have. They're nice if you get one, but that's not the strategy. I, I knew, because I remember getting a limit break for Cloud that was so crazy. I, I don't remember what it is exactly, but like I remember lots of hits, like a lot of damage, you know? Yeah, like, it, and I was like, like, I was like why is everybody time, so... I was, like, I was like, when do these happen? Well, because like, you, I heard legends about limit breaks. Yeah. Like, being like, limit breaks, like, that's what's up. And it's like, they're cool, sure, but they're not like that much cooler than other shit in the other games. And it's like, oh, now I No, they're sweet. Yeah. Now I, I really believe I didn't. If we can survive the first hit, I feel like we're gonna start doing limit breaks and knights of the round and like Ultima times four. How could it survive? Cloud's almost at 70. Oh yes. Man, if we were just walking around, I would love that. Yeah. I wish there were, for this part, I wish there were a way to like increase encounters, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. let's just get these going. Exactly. <laughs> I don't need to spend time just walking around. We get Cloud to 70 and then go get his ultimate weapon or That's whatever. That's what I'm thinking. Get the gold saucer. Yeah, and go buy our vacation home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go take a break from this nonsense. Exactly. And it's not a fun place to look. It's not like a beautiful location. Change the music to... Mm -hmm. We're starting to turn on the Gelnica. Yeah. Well, it won't be for... Oh, you want the green? Um, I'll have the... Give me that Frank's Red Hot. Oh, that's what I should do next. I should make hot sauce. Fuck yeah. In my quest to only learn how to make condiments. Things that, like, <laughs> also, like other condiments things. that, like, last. Typhoon leveled up. Yeah, sauce. I feel like almost every pizza I eat doesn't have enough sauce, but you need, it's like, you add too much, it's ruined. You yeah, it, well, it could fuck it up, yeah. I gotta find some herbs and spices in Red Dead. I'm tired of cooking plain food. Yeah. I had some animal fat, and I figured like we'd be able to cook something with that, but I guess you just sell it for funds. Or you make explosive bullets. Oh shit, mm hmm Have you checked out season two of Making a Murderer yet? Obviously no. not, otherwise <laughs> I would have heard about it. Nope. It sounds pretty awful. There was one scene that's in the finale of it. I can't believe I made it all the way. I really shouldn't It's have. ten episodes? Yeah. It's fucking crazy. Dude, it shouldn't... <laughs> it's literally, it's two episodes worth of material at most. Mm-hmm. Yeah, God, it's so unbearable. There, even when you start it, there, you won't make it more than two episodes in. I bet. But there's one scene that's worth seeing in the finale. It's so unaware of itself. It's crazy. There's a point where the lawyer that you've been following the whole time, like, files a motion that basically... She's just slinging mud all over the place and you just see a bunch of it kind of come to a head in a way mm -hmm. that's like both interesting and gross to be a part of because you're like, I'm watching, like, yeah, like, and it doesn't even make the, the comment they about make, their own yeah, self. Yeah, the fact that they didn't make the season about, like, how insane and out of hand this is. They, Instead, they're like, we're on a crusade for justice. But it's also... Which it doesn't look like that at all. When they do this thing, too, they'll, they'll also be like, 
And then this weird thing called Making a Murderer came out and really put the spotlight on this thing. And now, like, the spotlight's on it, but it doesn't, like... I don't understand how the, the creators of the show are not characters in Season 2. Yeah, I know. It's like... Because they're now a part of the story. So to recap, we don't recommend Making a Murderer Season 2. We uh, we don't recommend Fallout 76. Red Dead 2 is good. Yeah, and we don't recommend spending time in the Gelnica either. That is also not a recommendation. <laughs> you just would not believe how many times he, it like then goes to a part where you hear voiceover of Stephen Avery going, You know, they... If they'd done their job, they wouldn't be in here, you know? Like, uh, mm. that's just, that's just the way it is, though, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like being out I there. I can imagine, because a lot be of the first if he, season is that, too. I'd be free if I was out there, but in here, I'm not, you know? I'm not, I'm not free, because, you know, it's just the way it is, and you guys did their jobs. That wouldn't, that wouldn't be how it is, but that's how it is. And it's how, how it is, though. I... It's... They used all of the footage, man. You more I've than never, they did last time. I've man. never seen something that was more a case of two pounds of shit in a ten pound bag. I love how we've become like what we never wanted to be in the <laughs> Gelnica. Like we never wanted to be a podcast where we just like talk aimlessly about media we've consumed with no real format. And now here we are. That's what the game has done to us. Yeah, the g <laughs> we're just talking about stuff we hate. Like anybody cares. It's. <laughs> Oh my god, we're out of the fucking plane! We're four hours and 42 minutes into recording today. And this is the first time we're seeing other parts of this game. We got a good chunk of leveling done, though. We're, yes, at, we're we mostly up to 70. We are very, very much more powerful. Very different from riding a horse through the world. But look at that gold chocobo. Now that's how you ride around the world. God, I hope playing another game where the buttons are correct does not fuck us over on a boss. <laughs> if it happens, it happens, you know? I know, but... I was... Hopefully that five-hour session of leveling got us into the mindset of this game. Should I buy this house? Yeah, let's buy the fucking house. So we decide to stop off at Costa del Sol to buy this vacation house. Which was a mistake, because we're eliminating any procrastination we could do to take breaks from leveling. We're just going to go buy it. <laughs> you know, we think we're giving ourselves a reward here. We could have saved that for, you know, after another ten hours it's of true. this and gone like, you yeah. want to just go to Costa del Sol that for five been, minutes? That would have been better. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Wish you could take your golden chocobo into town. You know, that would be like the next-gen dream. That I was just thinking, like, how funny doing. it would be if, like, riding into town in Red Dead work the way it does in this. <laughs> Whether you see a town. And <laughs> yeah, and then you like, it. touch it and like <laughs> something else town. loads and you're in town. Oh. Alright, get the fuck up, I got $300,000. Praise Lord, it's a miracle. Who would ever think someone with some real money would ever come here? Yeah, believe it or right not. Right as the meteor is about to crash into our planet. I probably shouldn't even ask, but are you really gonna buy it? Yeah, yeah I found all this yeah. money in a fucking plane. Via cloud! Via cloud! Hmm, goodbye. Bye, fluffy pet. We are in the in the villa. <laughs> Yay! So um, so where's our one thirty fifth soldiers? We have two or three, right? Yeah. But oh, we have it downstairs. I believe so. Look at this bathroom. Plenty of toilet good paper. Music. Good music in this house. You're gonna want your vacation house to have plenty of good music. And we what is this like, place? Wait. We haven't been this down. Guy, snore, snore. We go into the basement of the house, and I think the soldiers aren't going to show up unless we have all of them. Yeah, so we don't even get to see the ones we've collected. And even though we bought the house... Well, there's a guy down here, and now I guess he's in our employ. It, I, yeah, I suppose, I guess he comes with the house. Yes, sir. How do you do? I'm the manager. Where right. is me? Well, I'm the owner. Yeah. <laughs> You'll pardon me, I'll be leaving. Good night. He's just going to live in here? I own this place. Get out, you Talk bum. to him again. Well, we bought it, whatever that's worth. What the well, fuck? Well, did we see the things on display? No, I couldn't find them. Well, we bought ourselves a sweet vacation home in Costa del Sol. We're gonna go retire there after we beat Sephiroth, exactly. I guess. Exactly. You know? If we save the world, we're gonna need... You know, we're gonna need a place to go. And that's episode 40. The grind has begun. The grind has truly and begun. neither of us have any idea yeah. how much it's going to take. <laughs> nope. Because I'm still looking at it going, 
Well, I'm going to get Cloud to 70, which is, you know, a benchmark. Yeah. But there's, like, several other benchmarks that we aren't even on our radar yet. Well, that's also just to get us to the battle arena, which is going to be next week. Right. Next week is going to be a little shorter of an episode, and it's going to be all battle arena all the time. We're going to get every <laughs> battle point, which is a separate currency from the... GP, it's BP. Yeah, and you can only have so much of it, so they put a hard limit on how much of that you can have. The way this all works is ridiculous, but we're going to get into that next week. Mm -hmm. It's all horrible out from here. <laughs> you have like a thousand yard stare. Well, it's like, the thing is, like the last few, I just love how much, or hate how much, every one of these episodes is like, a genuine step downward into darkness and despair. You know what's funny is like I was really excited to get to these because I think they're going to be the funniest <laughs> but hearing the Gelnica music and watching it again it's puts me in a bad mood. Right. Put, like, I'm like I There have go. been times where we've been editing this show in past seasons where when we get really tired like at the end of season two mm -hmm. we would get tired listening to listening ourselves. Listening to it like puts you in the mindset. So th that we have that ahead of us I like want to put on some like truly horrific music like corn or limp biscuit or something and like break something that belongs to somebody else. You know what I mean? Like I'm just like I'm just prickly. Fuck this place. <laughs> like so that's, yeah. that's where we're at. Oh, are you ready to enter the live stream? Yeah. See, see if there's any messages out there for us. I found a new method of getting there, which is like instead of trying to get there, you just don't try at all, you know? Oh shit. Well let's release ourselves from the try and enter the live stream. Mm-hmm. Wow, that took no effort at all. I know. I, why haven't we been doing it like that every time? That seems way easier. Well, sometimes it is fun to become a bubble or, yeah. you know, melt inside of yourself or I, whatever. I like all those too, but now the no effort way, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see the message. The message is coming towards me. The message reads, Number one, Jeff and Ryan, listening to you all play this game that I've played innumerable times has been an exercise in letting people fail so they can learn. It has made me consider my approach to parenting. Number two, Mr. Gray, if you're listening to this podcast, which you very well could be, but I have no idea. Hey, it's been a while. Remember when I called you at like 11.30 p.m. on Christmas Eve as kids to tell you I got FF7? And your dad was like, what the fuck, but put you on the phone anyway? Simpler times, man. Hope everything's going well. That's a wonderful message. <laughs> I love that message. <laughs> yeah. Man, I we're love... affecting people's parenting? What? Yeah, I That's love that idea. That's more than I ever thought I, would have, I had accomplished up to this point, you know? Really? Me too. And I love the idea of like, yeah, I, I imagine that's good advice to let somebody fail so that they can learn through their own failures. You know, I'm not going to think about it too much. I'm just going to assume that we're doing a positive right? and not a negative. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Gray, I hope you are listening to this. And that was awesome yeah. that your dad put you on the phone at that time of day. Simpler times. Yeah. Indeed. Thank you so much to Zachary Scalco for that message. Thank you. We really appreciate it. And uh, let's get out of here. Mm -hmm. And we're back. If you're interested in a live stream message, just email nocappodcast at gmail.com. That's N-O-C-K-A-T with the subject line live stream. Mm -hmm. We do payments through PayPal. So just email us and we'll get in touch. Yeah. The message can be whatever you want. To, for us to say message to us mm -hmm. it can be an ad for your own project whatever you want it to be and also tell a friend about the show yeah we like it when you do that because it helps us <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it's the other things that we thing like say. that when you do because it helps us are uh <laughs> Rating and reviewing us on Apple Podcasts and yes. other places where you can rate and review. We love it when you do that. That helps us. You know, it also helps us when you go to the Patreon, and we also thank you guys for yeah, going to the Patreon. Thank you very much to all of our Patreon supporters. At patreon.com slash our hearts. These are the episodes that you were really paying for. This is like the heart of the show, the dark, black, shriveled, what is going on with us and why do we do this heart of the show coming up, which we're very excited to bring you. Yes. And yeah, at the Patreon, uh, you can uh, get the bonus content and episodes that you can unlock. You can That's get right. the video version. You can get a t-shirt at a certain tier. Mm -hmm. And we're planning more stuff for that all the time. Yep. It may seem like it comes sort of slowly, but there's a lot to do. So thank you for supporting us through it. Yes. Um, thank you. Follow us on Social media, yes. we're at No Cat Podcast mm -hmm. on all of them. You know, the main three at least. 
the grams, the the tweeters, the books, the the visage book. <laughs> the visage book. <laughs> All right, what are we gonna have for dessert this time? Well, last time when I was meditating on the dessert, yeah, I pictured a thick slice of kiwi with cream cheese and a cherry on top. That glazed with some kind of simple disgusting, syrup. Disgusting, and I'm gonna try it. Mm-hmm. So that's what's coming right now. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> they should start a program to get like all kinds of different crazy animals into space. Well, they have brought like a lot, like turtles yeah, and all sorts yeah, of shit. Yeah, but I mean, like you know, like let's say it's like an international effort, and it's uh-huh. like Australia lends uh-huh. a koala, uh-huh. and then like Africa <laughs> gives a zebra or something. And you well, send wait, up yeah, if you got to get an Africa, elephant, uh, in a- <laughs> Africa, the yeah, country. Well, some. <laughs> anyway, I'm just saying, you know, get an inner like a panda from China, and you I, get them all on there. I like the big, the biggest mammals. Yeah, I mean, elephants, get an elephant, manatees. But then you get like all this great PR to get people psyched about space because they're like, "Did you hear? They're sending a koala up, like to represent us." And then like uh, for a kangaroo, maybe a kangaroo. I mean, really, in just space Australia has the best be, animals. It's just like kicking in zero g. But I really, like, I, re- I really destroying the walls. I want multiples so you can get like the. Photo they also, up. like, they punch. Like, they'll, like, just fucking punch oh. out the, the window or well, something. Well, we gotta build, obviously, like, a special thing for them to be inside of. But, like, you want that photo up of, like, around a big window looking out. Yeah. All of them kind of together of, yes, as yes. one looking you, down at yeah, the Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're all <laughs> looking around the same portal. There's, like, a parrot sitting on the on the shoulder of, like, a koala. And then there's, yeah, I, like, a giraffe's head just totally. sticking up in uh-huh. the middle. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is what... People would get people Why are, about is NASA space. not on that? I mean, they need to stop with so much science <laughs> <laughs> and get get us some cute animals looking at Earth.